I'm Gareth Pugh and I'm a fashion designer. I'm based in London, but I show my collections twice a year in, in Paris. It's not really about clothes, it's more about an idea. An alternate reality, I guess, or something that you, you're not necessarily so familiar with. I first became interested in the Tudor and Stuarts when I was very young. I remember being brought down to London for the first time. I think my, my dad and my brother were coming down to see Sunderland play at Wembley. And because my mum didn't want me to feel like I was being left out, because I wasn't really that much into football, she took me around the Tower of London. And there was this magazine that she bought me, which was, you know, it was kind of, I remember the first issue was all about Queen Elizabeth I. Um, and it came with all these like little sort of costume things and you could dress them up and I remember getting, you know, I wasn't very good at, I remember I wasn't very good, good at drawing heads. But I, I, I remember getting my, my mum or my dad to draw me a head and then I would kind of draw the outfit from the neck down. I'm Anna Reynolds and I'm Curator of Paintings at Royal Collection Trust and I'm the Curator of the In Fine Style Exhibition at the Queen's Gallery. So I've come here today to meet Gareth Pugh, I'm so excited to meet him and get his unique personal take on the exhibition, talk to him about the paintings, talk to him about his clothes and see how he might have been inspired um, in part by the Tudor and Stuart period. So this is your studio. Yes indeed. <laughs> so this is the um, the first outfit from my first show in Paris. It's, I guess it's quite an important one for me. So spring, summer 2009. Yeah, when I first saw this, this is the dress that really made me think Tudor and Stewart and link right. with Gareth Pugh. One of the ideas with this collection was to kind of do something that was quite, almost kind of quite stately. So we have this kind of very stately rough, which makes the models walk in a very particular way, very kind of upright and poised. And then we have this dress that comes in at the waist, there's no course underneath, but it's kind of um, accentuated the waist by this very kind of intricate underskirt, which is to match the top, I guess, made of these kind of roughs. It's like a farthingale in a painting. The, the Spanish portraits, for example, this, this cone-shaped Spanish farthingale, you're doing a modern version of it here in the yeah. fabric underneath. So this picture is a full-size portrait of mm. the Infanta, so it's the princess daughter of Philip II of Spain. She's Isabella Clara Eugenia, and at this time she's Archduchess of Austria. Incredibly rich and lavish, opulent, with all that gold thread, and the symbolism also within the embroidery there has a kind of links to the idea of marriage and um, also her kind of the heritage of her family, the, the interlinking rings and what was it, the house of Valois that she's, she's from. You know, it's very much about presenting oneself as an icon, I guess. It's, it's, it's very powerful. I don't necessarily like to think of what I do in historical terms, but actually the silhouette that we presented for fall, it was all incredibly long skirts with crinolines underneath, going up to a very small waist. And then there was these coats that kind of split away. So you've got this triangle over a triangular skirt shape. I, I love triangles. You know, in physics, the triangle is the strongest shape known to man. It's all very kind of subtle and it's all kind of quite, you know, abstracted, but I think it all comes down to that silhouette of power. And I think, again, that's something that I like to inject a little bit into my own work. Well, this is one of the opening outfits from spring, summer 2012. I guess it's kind of my version of the typical suit of armour. I've heard you describe your clothes as kind of armour and armour-like, and I wondered yeah. what you thought about 
about this armour here? What does it make you think of? And could you see any kind of affinities with your clothes? I love the fact that it's kind of there to protect whoever's wearing it, but it looks so much like the exoskeleton of a beetle or something almost. The other thing that I think is interesting about armour at this date is how closely it relates to fashion. So we think of yeah. armour as kind of something separate, but in actual fact, this is exactly the fashionable line of 1607. You see yeah, it in clothes. Yeah, you've got these kind of like breeches. Yeah, they look just kind like... Of like padded kind of this kind of padded hip it yeah almost. exactly and the, and the v shape of the waistline i mean yeah, that could just go straight sort of across line, but it's yeah. like a, it is a v you know I'm, I'm very much taken by the fact that um it's, it's perhaps one of especially like the just talking specifically about the the tudor period sort of like the modern equivalent of the first power dresses you know the idea of using clothes for more purpose than just clothing oneself, especially with like um, how things kind of were um, started by the monarch, I guess, and copied by the court and then copied by the the merchants and the kind of more kind of middle classes, and then you know it kind of filters down that kind of trickle down effect that you know people talk about even today with fashion. And it's kind of fascinating that that was happening, you know, what like four or five hundred years ago as well.